Hi, I'm another version of you. And I'm also your host, Lance Mungia, and welcome back to Waking Universe. Today, I am here with a very special guest. I'm here with Mr. Dennis George Rudolph. He is the creator of Life Force Tarot, and he is also a practitioner of Now Reiki. And uh, we will explain through the course of the interview what those terms mean. And Dennis, thank you for coming out and joining us today in the studio. Glad to be here. You know, so tell me a little bit about Now Reiki and Life Force Tarot. What is it that you do? What Now Reiki attempts to do is get back to the original ideas of what Reiki was, a way of focusing life force energy for personal healing and for healing other people. The basis of it to me is that there is only one of us here and there is only now. And you said it well right at the beginning, I am another version of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a translation of the Mayan in la Ketch. That's correct. It, I am you, an, you say I am that again, in la Ketch? In la Ketch. I should start using that. I, I knew yeah. that that was what it, it was. I didn't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I am another version of, of you. There is only one of us here, mm -hmm. and there is only now. The only difference between you and me, or between me and a plant over there, is the vibration of energy. When I'm focusing energy, I don't see myself as the healer because the uh, one of my teachers said that the definition of a healer is somebody who was sick and got better. Mm -hmm. The definition of a great healer is somebody who was very sick and got better very quickly. Mm -hmm. So your body already knows how to heal. You already have that vibration. It's built into your DNA. It's we're, we're coded with it. It's automatic. When you get a cut, your body doesn't need to be told how to heal. It starts healing automatically. When we focus energy, whether we call it Reiki or any of the other many brand names this kind of work has been branded with, all we're doing is raising the vibration in the proximity of that area to allow the body to raise its own vibration. So if I'm here because I don't feel so good and another vibration comes in over here, pretty soon, as long as this vibration stays high, it can bring the other vibration up to its level. Mm -hmm. What sometimes tends to happen is people who are doing this kind of work, especially if they're not familiar with the breathing or with how to actually understand that they are connected to the other person already, is the other person may start feeling better, but then they start feeling worse, and pretty soon they meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. So now this person feels drained. And, they, and it, one of the old models in Reiki was to see energy as like water. Like you lay hands on somebody and it's like you're flowing water out to them. Well, if you keep flowing water pretty soon, you're gonna get drained. So then people were told in this country, well, imagine there's a big siphon coming in through your head. Water's coming in, goes out into your body, flows out through your hands. And that was a little more useful. But if you take away the energy as stuff model and see energy as vibration, then all you gotta do is keep your vibration up here, bring another one down here, and just like you put some grandfather clocks into a room and after a while they'll all start ticking in the same pattern. Mm -hmm. You bang some keys on a piano and the other instruments of the same tone will start Resonating. Resonating with that. You're, you're talking about the, the concept of resonance. Resonance. You know, this is, a, this is yeah. a scientific concept that you know, everybody from Einstein on down the line has talked about is that, is that you know, like generates like. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, this is a, you know, the secret or something like that of the law of attraction is that you, know, you, you, uh, you think about a certain thing and you bring that to you because you're resonating with it. You know? yeah. And so what you're saying is that on, a, on an energetic level, um, you're like basically tuning in and matching frequencies with, with someone and bringing them up to your uh, resonance, I guess. Right. You're, you're becoming in resonance with them. Yes, and yet at the same time, and this is, this is part of the uniquely now Reiki approach, you recognize that that's only a model. Mm -hmm. That's a model for what's going on. Sometimes you can just lay hands on somebody, just go intuitive, lay hands on somebody where it seems right, and without any focus, the healing happens, mm -hmm. or something shifts emotionally. Mm -hmm. What frequently happens is that somebody starts with a pain. You work on the pain. The pain moves. You chase it. It moves again. You follow it. 
you find you're following the same meridian routes that acupuncturists and acupressure users have been working with for centuries, but you're doing it intuitively, and that, that this is how they discovered the stuff in the first place. How did you get involved in, in, in uh, Reiki? Now Reiki, I, I Well, my first involvement with hands-on healing came when I was in my teens, and I got involved in Christian churches, mm -hmm. and I got involved with a ministry that involved laying on of hands. And the first time one of the people that worked with this ministry laid hands on me, praying for me, it was like a bolt of energy went, shot up from my feet to the top of my head and I dropped over backwards onto a couch. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that at all. And I remember sitting there stunned. I said, what was that? And this guy said, that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Which was a legitimate answer from his perspective. And I still consider that a legitimate answer. My thoughts on who Jesus is and what he accomplished are a little bit different now than they were then. But it, Jesus himself in the Gospels spoke of the energy, the Greek word, the Koine word was dunamis, mm -hmm. when the woman touched the hem of his garment and he said, who touched me? And they said, Master, you're surrounded by people. Who, who do you think touched you? He said, I felt, I felt virtue. The, the King James Version is translated virtue. I felt mm -hmm. virtue go from me. I felt dunamis go from me. Life force energy, basically. He was working with that. He said so mm -hmm. in, the, in the Gospels. Uh, so that was my first experience with laying on of hands for healing. So I started trying it and I found that colds could be healed very quickly, that sore throats and headaches could be healed very quickly, but not much else with mm -hmm. just laying on hands and praying for people. Then in the 90s, I learned Usui Reiki. Which is the original form of which Reiki? Is the, which is the original form mm -hmm. of Reiki. And this was at a time when a lot of the Japanese techniques were starting to come back into American Reiki. So my teacher, a wonderful woman named Rita, she specially emphasized those Japanese techniques along with some techniques that she learned from other sources. And so she taught, uh, taught me a form of Reiki which I found was very effective. Eventually I started studying other forms of um, hands-on healing one especially known as quantum touch, which is a variation on the techniques of Robert Rasmussen, who operated in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, I think even earlier, he had his own way of focusing energy, and he independently came up with techniques that involved tying and breathing with focus, just like the Qigong masters, just like the original Reiki masters taught, mm -hmm. that sensate focus inside feeling the inside of your body, feeling the sensations inside, and then tying that in with your breath, moving it with your breath, is very effective for personal healing and for healing other people. And part of that, one of the basic principles in Now Reiki and Hanson Life Force Tarot is energy follows attention. In energy other, follows attention. And energy follows mm -hmm. attention. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's that's. Uh, it goes back again to you know that popular notion that's in um, the Secret, the movie that came out a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it, and they did a uh, a mass uh, meditation study in mm -hmm. I think it was Seattle or somewhere like that, where uh, they would bring seven thousand people together and 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 uh, meditate to lower the the crime rate mm -hmm. with, with everyone just basically picturing that everything was great in in Seattle that month, that there was no crime anywhere. And, and then mm -hmm. uh, statistically that month, crime dropped like an impossible percentage, like 80 percentage points. And uh, there was no uh, other explanation. And, and again, because by, by that many people putting their energy on a positive outcome, mm -hmm. it s somehow brought about that <coughs> outcome. You know? And, and uh, I find that uh, fascinating. And it's not just a spiritual concept, it's a scientific concept. Yeah. You know? um, but, uh, but I love that, that clearly stated that energy follows Attention. Okay, energy follows mm -hmm. attention. And in now Reiki, that's actually modified. Energy follows attention and intention. Mm -hmm. So it's not just what you're paying attention to, it's what you're choosing to focus the energy on. Mm -hmm. Let's clarify that. Uh, it's not just what you're paying attention to, it's what you're choosing to focus on. What's the difference between paying attention and choosing to focus on something? There's an old Zen saying, the mind is like a drunken monkey. 
Mm -hmm. It focuses on this. It looks at that. It's like, whoa, look at the interesting, uh, interesting duct work up there, and check out those lights over there. And uh, God, I wonder what it says on that box over there. And the mind goes all over the place. And if you can focus attention, you've got a powerful tool mm -hmm. in your armory to affect all kinds of outcomes. So does now Reiki just give you the process of focusing attention? Is that what it's designed to do? It, it does a well, I'll say a lot more than that. Um, with now Reiki especially, there's actually meditations that are designed to alter your brain waves to allow you to f not only focus, but to sense your unity with all that is. With, with now Reiki, there are actually some audio meditations that, that uh, that the founder put in with the book this is that, a, this that is alter a, your brain waves. This is the book here, Now Reiki? And uh, can they get that on Amazon? or? Uh, yeah, it is available on mm -hmm. Amazon. They could go to my website and there's mm -hmm. links to it on Amazon. Okay. And? DennisGeorgeRudolph.com. Mm -hmm. That's my uh, shameless self-promotion <laughs> moment. <laughs> um, so, so, by, so basically what you're saying is that the way that energy work works is by simply focusing your mind and your intention on the outcome of, of uh, someone's issue being, becoming better. That's the most basic. Mm -hmm. What accelerates that is breathing. And I found that, well, I wasn't the first to find this. This mm -hmm. has been taught for generations. The inner body awareness focusing on your own sensations in your body, tying that in with your breathing can actually accelerate that energy. It becomes a way of working with energy where you can focus energy with any part of your body mm -hmm. and you can fo focus it toward any place or time you can imagine. Mm. Okay, that's an interesting point. And that, and that brings me to uh, another point I wanted to bring up, which is uh, it's one thing to talk about you know, um, the process of energy healing up close, but what about distance healing? You know, if you say you can focus mm -hmm. that energy at any place at any time, mm -hmm. uh, can I be thinking of my dad in Bakersfield and, you know, and, and my concern for an issue that he has and send him good vibes? I mean, I would assume that that's the case because that's how something like uh, prayer or something would work, I would assume. The simple answer is yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're doing. And there are many ways to do it. When I first... Uh, Learned Usui Reiki. Mm -hmm. uh, Reedy gave me a little teddy bear. Mm -hmm. I, I, I named him Reiki Bear. And it, 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 it looked kind of silly at first, like, ah, a teddy bear. Am mm -hmm. I six years old? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, one, it was meaningful because it came from a very respected teacher. But secondly, this could now stand in for anybody. Mm -hmm. And because it was a cute nice. little lovable toy, it was something it was easy to feel positive regard for. Mm -hmm. So now, this will stand in for my friend in Kansas who has issues with her heart. So I will focus on the heart. And basically, my intent is to focus energy toward my friend's heart. But I'm using the bear as a stand-in. And it has an effect on the other end. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it sounds magical. But when you realize that everything on Earth is connected, it's like a web. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected to everything else. And by focusing on somebody else, we're bringing that person into our attention. And remember, energy follows attention. This can even be done without a physical stand-in. Mm -hmm. Usui Sensei it's said that he liked to use photographs. Mm -hmm. He would use a photograph of somebody and would focus on them. Um, another one of my teachers liked to imagine a person in a bubble and then fill the bubble with energy. We will just focus on the person inside mm -hmm. and just focus the energy inside. Th think, think of what happens when you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. When you're dreaming, you are acting in an environment, you're interacting with what seem to be other people, and you have physical sensations, and you have very visceral experiences. And when you wake up, you realize they were all happening in here, mm -hmm. but they were very, very real at the time. So if you can go inside and imagine the person you want to focus energy to, imagine the person who maybe needs healing or maybe needs an emotional boost at the time, 
And like in a dream, you're focusing energy toward that person. But you can feel it. It becomes a very visceral, physical thing. You can feel the energy just moving from that place in the middle of your mind, filling, your, filling yourself and filling the person that you're focusing energy toward. And it has a real effect. And you can talk to the person later. Whether, whether they knew you were going to do it at that time or not, I've talked to people later and uh, they, they knew something was happening and it did have a very beneficial effect. Mm -hmm. What you just described is the process of manifestation. You know, it's like a, that's, mm -hmm. that's the, the process of, of basically starting, starting out as a psychological process of, of like, you know, I can visualize this outcome. You know, mm -hmm. athletes do it all the time. I mean, uh, right. creative artists do it all the time. I mean, you know, everybody that has accomplished anything started out with first the thought. But uh, it's not just the intent, it also is the, uh, the purity of an intent. I mean, if it's coming from a more loving place, then, then it's, uh, you know, um, got a lot more wop to it than, than if it's coming from a fearful place or from a, a you know, um, a negative place. Oh, but, absolutely. You know. And at the same time, just like with meditation, even if you're depressed, if you sit quietly and do nothing, bring all your attention into your breath, thoughts will come up. Mm -hmm. That's natural. But you bring your attention back to your breath. After a while, even if you're feeling like this, it's like you come up to a place of peace, mm -hmm. at least for that time you're meditating. And if you continue doing that day after day, you can get to a place where you can remain in that place of peace for longer and longer periods of time throughout the day. So it is when you're focusing healing energy on somebody, which is a very meditative process because it's not about thought. It's about getting out of your own way, allowing the energy to come through, focusing, focusing. That's where conscious attention comes in. You choose where to focus it. And at the same time, it affects you. It has a healing effect on you, brings you to a place of peace. It has a healing effect on the other person and can actually bring them to a place of peace as well. I, I want to mention a couple of quick things. One, now Reiki, like all forms of energy healing work is a complementary modality. It's mm -hmm. not intended to replace medicine. Mm -hmm. It's not intended to replace uh, doctor's directives. Anybody who does this kind of work or sees somebody to have this kind of work done, if you have a medical condition, you need to get medical help. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, in fact, my, my own teachers and, and Bill will tell people, see a doctor. You need to see a doctor for this. Well, this, I, is, this doesn't replace that. No, if you have I, a broken bone, see a doctor. I think that uh, people, it, it's easy for uh, someone to forget, hey, you know what, you're living in a real world, in a yeah. real body with, with actual yeah. repercussions. And, and uh, there's such a thing as uh, action that, that you can mm. take. And, and, if, and if someone, you know, if, 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 you're, if your kid's dying of pneumonia and you can give the kid an antibiotic and, and save him, my opinion would be, you know, you do whatever you can. It's like there's, there's many ways to... Uh, to get to a solution, and, and uh, you know, I don't think there is a wrong one. Take action however you possibly you know, can, and you know, discern and, and think for yourself, really, is my motto. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about Life Force Tarot. First of all, what is tarot? Tarot is an, a symbolic oracle that plays on universal symbolism, organizes it in ways that depend on synchronicity, possibly on telekinetic uh, aspects when the cards are being shuffled. But it creates synchronicity. It creates meaningful coincidence. Cards are turned up. They have symbols on them. The symbols are meaningful, and they wind up answering real questions that people have. They also show emotional concerns. They can show concerns about love. They can show concerns about health. They can show concerns about finances. And they can clarify things so that a person who is looking at the cards or who is consulting somebody who is proficient at looking at the cards can get real clarity to find real answers mm -hmm. where maybe the clarity wasn't so much there before. The other aspect of the other way of looking at the tarot is it's just a pack of cards, just a bunch of cards. It's ink on paper showing various symbols and in a sense that's all it is. It's just a bunch of cards 
with pictures on them, and the real magic is inside you. It's inside me. And so we bring the magic to the symbols. And in that interaction, amazing things can happen. How do you personally think that uh, that it works. I mean, I would look at a card, and, and it's like looking at an ink blot. You know, it's like you're, mm. you know, you can see a, a butterfly, you can see a, uh, you know, a, a child running. You can see, you can see all kinds of things when you when you look at something, and and it's like it's if if each card is designed to elicit a certain uh, type of emotion or emotional response, and then mm -hmm. you put them into an order, that creates a um, an outlook, you know, a story to tell, you know, and and uh, but how do you see it? See that that's that's a a brilliant way to see it. I see it from a number of possible approaches simultaneously mm -hmm. because they're all just, every explanation of why it works or how it works is just mind candy for the part of the brain that's trying to figure it out to get that part out of the way so that the part of the brain that's actually doing the stuff, mm -hmm. that's intuiting, that's creating the future, that's looking at the past, that's getting the insights, can do its job. And those are two different parts of the brain that do that. Let's talk about what do some of the cards represent. Okay, we can look at a few. Right. Well, let's, let's, let, let's start with the Fool. The Fool is the card number zero in the tarot. The Fool is an image of a young person that could be a young man or a young woman about to step off the cliff. The fool could be stepping off the cliff about to plunge into a disastrous situation. Or the fool could know something that we don't know. The fool is about to fly, and the little dog knows that and is ready to fly with him. The card is numbered zero, indicating that the fool is all potentiality. It is the zero that contains everything. It is the nothing in which all subsists. It is the beginning. And in a sense, it's also the end when everything comes back to the beginning and it starts over. So in practice, in a reading, the fool comes up. The fool could say, you're about to do something really dumb. Watch out. Mm -hmm. Or the fool could be saying, you're judging somebody a bit harshly. Be a bit nicer. They're not as foolish as you think. Or the fool could be saying, this is a person in a state of total innocence. And as such, what they're about to do is bound to succeed. A lot depends on context. If we go to the next two cards in the series of the Major Arcana, we look at the Magician and the High Priestess. I'm going to put them side by side here. They are the one and the two. In a sense, they are the primal man and the primal woman. The Magician is very, in, in, in terms of, in, in Asian terms, the magician is very young, very outgoing, very projective, making things happen, active. The priestess is very yin, very receptive, very much behind the scenes. She is the one who is taking things in. The magician gives, the priestess receives. The magician is very much out there, the priestess is behind the scenes. The magician is one, the odd number. The priestess is two, the even number. The, print, the magician is manifestation. The priestess is the one receiving the manifestation. So these are just some of the basic ideas behind some of these cards. If we go further, there's various types of people. You get further in the series and it starts describing states, strength, death temperance. If you get toward the higher numbered cards, you start getting actual physical places which have a deep symbolic resonance within the human psyche. The star, the moon, the sun, the blasted tower, the final judgment, the universe. So let me ask you this. Can you use this as a, um, a way of getting to someone's personal issues that are, that are happening? Or, or you know, like if I ask you, um, you know, can you tell me, you know, flight, flight 21 is going down, like using these cards? I don't know about flight 21 going down. There, mm -hmm. I have heard rumors, and they are, I'll emphasize they are unverified rumors, but people told me, a whole bunch of people told me that uh, they would pull up a card for the day, and on um, 
September 11, 2001, a whole lot of people pulled up the, the tower, tower mm -hmm. which uh, show you that image right here. Now that's a bit literalistic. The, the cards generally tend to be a lot more symbolic than that. And in fact, that's an unverified rumor. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. Generally, when the tower shows up, when the tower shows up, it's usually referring to a change in consciousness and sometimes a change in consciousness that a person didn't see coming. Suddenly, you realize something you didn't understand before. Oh no, I have to see things in a whole new way now. So, in a reading, in practice, we select cards usually from a face-down deck we turn them up, we find that the symbols on those cards interact with what's going on inside the human mind, and meaningful coincidences show up. Now here's how I see it. You got three basic areas of time, if we look at the timeline. You got past, present, and future. That's how people usually think of it. Mm -hmm. But in reality, when you get to the future, there's not just one timeline, there's multiple timelines. You've got a world of potential out there because you can always change it. So you can always shift your course. You can always shift your course. Mm -hmm. The future is potential. Mm -hmm. The future is always potential. That's why I always, I always tend to not believe in anybody that says, uh, I, I know what's going to happen here, or I got it all figured out. Because if you're not figuring it out, you know, nobody else is going to figure it out for you. you know, I guess, I guess unless you just let everybody figure it out for you. Right. Well, there, there, there are a lot, sad to say, there are a lot of um, self-professed psychics, mm -hmm. card readers, uh, some of whom have make themselves very well known and become very successful, who use, let's say, their gifts. They use uh, what they can do. A lot of them are very good at reading people, but they use it in a very manipulative way. I'll give you one of the easiest examples, and I've had a number of friends who've fallen into this scam because it's a very popular scam. Somebody goes to see a card reader or they get the coupon for the $10 palm reading mm -hmm. and they go to the neon palm place that's advertised. They get the palm reading or the card reading and very often the people that are doing this can be very accurate. Mm -hmm. I mean, intuition and these things are a natural part of who we are. And everybody is psychic, ultimately. We all have it. It's just a matter of learning to use it, to work with that part of the mind. So they see the psychic. The psychic, Madame Zorka sees all, knows all. And if there's a real Madame Zorka, no offense. That I'm, this is a fictitious uh, person. Sees all, knows all, psychic to the stars. They tell them some thing, they tell the client a few things about themselves that are very impressive, indeed. Wow. And then they tell him the zinger. Oh, things are going pretty good, but oh, somebody's working against you. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's a curse going on. Mm. I don't know what we can do. Maybe there's something we can do. I know of a spell we can do. There's this <laughs> candle we can burn. You know, the little candle, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the $35 candle. Mm -hmm. That, uh, it's not so powerful. But the taller candle, the $500 candle, <laughs> you know, if we light that one, that'll, that'll start solving your problems. Do you have a credit card? Right. <laughs> you, yeah. Well, so, again, because you're giving, away your, you're giving away your own free will, you know, because you're, you're allowing someone else right. to tell you, you know, you have a problem, and by the way, I can fix yeah. it. You know, and the only curse going on in those cases is the curse that that person, that con mm -hmm. artist, just laid on the poor person, right. the poor mm -hmm. innocent seeker who's coming in. And if that person comes in with a real problem already, mm -hmm. oh, ka-ching, ka-ching, yeah. and uh, it's like, you know, bring in a bunch of money, and we're mm -hmm. going to send it to the church up north, right. and for another thousand dollars, we'll roll the egg over you. And there's mm -hmm. all kinds of, nothing against egg rolling, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually using a real example from a, a friend of mine who was um, caught into one of these mm -hmm. scams. Well, so... Uh, the, the, the difference between the life force tarot approach and, and really any ethical psychic, uh, the, the, the friends that I work with have the same set of ethics, is we're looking to give the power back to the client mm -hmm. to help you find your own answers so that you go away with clarity, making your own choices. If you come to see somebody like me or 
another ethical psychic, you're not there to be told what to do or to give away your decision-making capacity or to come back every couple days with more money mm -hmm. for another question. It's to empower you. It's like, it's like seeing a counselor or seeing uh, someone from the clergy. Everybody that I know that works with now Reiki or that works with tarot is an ordained minister and is working under that. Mm -hmm. And we are actually doing it as a spiritual service. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that if you're anything that you can do to call light to something that already exists, it's, it's not something that has to be woo-woo and, and outside of yourself. Right. It's just basically going, look, is there some, something that you can make better in your life and how does that work? You're able to put your energy in a positive direction and make positive changes, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and you mentioned the secret and there's mm -hmm. a, lot of, uh, a lot of talk the last few years about the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. One, which I think there is something to that, there is mm -hmm. a lot to that. And at the same time, the one aspect of that that I think deserves more attention and has generally gotten is the last part of the word attraction. The last mm -hmm. part is action. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just deciding what you want, visualizing it, but it's actually taking steps to get there. Put one foot in front of the other. Do the actions that are consistent with going in that direction. Mm -hmm and that's how you can change your direction. Hmm. So in a tarot reading, if you see a future you don't like, you can change it. It's not set in stone. At most, it's cardboard. Cardboard's flimsy. You can, if, if, if I lay out three cards, and let's say one of them is, let, let's, uh, let's go with an easy example here. Let's pull the tower back up. Let's say I lay out three cards, and one of them is the tower, and that's in the future spot over here. Well now, suppose somebody doesn't want that kind of sudden change of consciousness. Well, let's focus on a more gentle outcome. And so we might, uh, we might work on a ritual or a visualization or even focusing some energy toward that part of the future. We can focus energy through time. Mm -hmm focus energy toward that part of the future. And once we sense a shift, we can have the client move the card from the table, or if I'm doing it for myself, I'll move it, and then pull another card from the face down deck. You, every time, almost every time, it is a much more positive card because we have focused energy toward a more positive outcome. The next part of moving toward that outcome is taking the actions that'll get us there. Start moving toward it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Let's try doing a sample reading. Sure. I'd like to do a, a sample reading. I, I don't really have a particular question. Why don't we, why don't we just ask what's going on uh, with me uh, right now and, and what do I need to know? Okay. Then I will do this pretty much the way I would do it with, um, if, you know, if you were to come to me, mm -hmm. say at Alexandria, mm -hmm. and uh, as for reading, we'd sit down and I would hand you the deck like this. Okay. And I'd say, what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and mix those up. Shuffle it. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be thorough because mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see why in a sec. But just do it in a way that's comfortable for you. What you are doing is adding your own energy to the cards. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now, with your left hand, mm -hmm. I'd like you to cut those into three piles. Okay. And in the old tarot traditions, the reason we would use the left hand is because it's the hand closest to the heart. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that the left hand is the hand that is controlled by the right side of the brain, which is the more intuitive and creative part of the brain. Mm -hmm. So it still works. Hmm. Now, Lance, again, using your left hand, mm -hmm. I'd like you to move your hand over the cards, okay. trust your feelings, and pull out any three cards okay. you feel. One. Okay. Okay. Now, we may ribbon these out again, but... I'm going to hold these three cards up. We've got 
Number 14 from the Major Arcana, the Temperance card. Mm -hmm. We've got the Two of Wands, and we've got the Ten of Swords. Now, if we take a look at the Ten of Swords, that is one of the most formidable, fearsome-looking yeah, cards. That in the doesn't deck. really they look too good. I don't even know if I like that. Doesn't really look too good. <laughs> <coughs> now, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on that one first because that's the one that tends to scare people. Mm -hmm. What you're looking at. <clears throat> of these three. What you're looking at is a guy who's been pierced through the back from, from, from his butt to his ear with a series of swords. Sounds like a typical day at work. No. <laughs> <laughs> right here at KJAM. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the opposite. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Ten of Swords, one thing you'll, okay, one thing, I'm going to hold this up to the camera and then I'll show you. Mm -hmm. One thing you'll notice about these swords is they're identical. They're all the same sword. Now think about it. How many swords does it take to kill someone? One. Just one. Mm -hmm. So what you have an image here is overkill. Now if you realize that the swords in the tarot tend to refer to thinking, mm -hmm. to the activities of the mind, this is repetitive thoughts basically being repeated over and over in the brain in a very destructive way. Mm -hmm. The Golden Dawn, the Order of the Golden Dawn named this card Ruin. Others have called it Depression. Mm -hmm. It tends to come up for people who are depressed. Here it's showing up in your future spot, and it's basically coming up. When it comes up in the future, it's coming up as a warning. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're either dealing with the situation now or you're coming to deal. I think you're dealing with it right now. Mm -hmm. That could have the potential to wind you up emotionally mm -hmm. and create a lot of conflict, especially inner conflict. Mm -hmm. And so what you're getting here is basically a warning saying, don't let it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's the nice thing about it coming up here. It's not here to scare, it's here to warn. It's right. basically saying, don't let this happen. You don't have to let this happen. Mm -hmm. So what I would like you to do is to think of this one situation that has been on your mind that has the greatest potential for for conflict and especially for inner conflict. And we, right. we already talked about it, so yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, not because of any psychic magic, but because mm -hmm. we talked about it a little bit earlier. And right now, it doesn't have that big of an emotional impact, but you can see where the potential is for right. it to wind yeah, up it's, into it's something uh, I, mean, I mean, basically what we talked about earlier, just for anybody listening, is I'm in the process of buying a house, and it can be very stressful, yes. you know, <laughs> that, that process. In order to make the decisions that you want to make as you're going through this process, it's really helpful to have a clear mind, one that's not encumbered by a lot of emotions or a lot of, oh my God, what's about to happen thoughts. And you're not given to that sort of thinking, but because you are under a situation that has the potential for a lot of mm -hmm. stress, and because this card did come up as a warning, we might want to do something to kind of forfend mm -hmm. that possible outcome. So right now, what you can do and what I can do together is, let's imagine right here, right here in the center of the table, let's imagine the best possible outcome for this. Let's imagine you and Melissa getting the house of your dreams. Mm -hmm. And we don't even have to make it that specific because mm -hmm. it may or may not be the one that you're, fo that you're thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. But the house of your dreams, and there you are, very, very happy, content, holding each other, knowing that this has come out to be exactly what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna just focus energy into that bubble. We're seeing the house and you and Melissa in the bubble. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and focus your attention into that and see it as clearly as you can. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by the expression on your face that the thought you're seeing feels good. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to do is Imagine yourself in that situation. See what you'd see through your own eyes as you're stepping into that new home, exactly the one you want, and it's yours, and all the stresses in the past. There's, and it was so much easier than you thought it was gonna be, and it's exactly what you want. See what you'd see through your own eyes, hear what you would hear, and feel how it feels mm -hmm. to enjoy that now. Now I'm going to do something that may look a little silly, but I'm going to take this bubble and I'm just going to blow it right toward you. Mm -hmm.
now. I want you to take this card and set it aside. Turn it over and set it aside. Turn it over <coughs> and set it aside. Yes. Okay. And using your left hand again, pull out another card and set it right there. Okay. Let's see what we've changed. Okay, what we pulled up was the, what Lance pulled up was the Page of Swords, which is somebody who is dealing with thoughts in a very clear way and who is at the beginning of a very positive process. How does this card feel to you, the image? A lot better than that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easily. <coughs> Let's pull up one more just to set it next to it to get a little greater clarity. Oh, nice. Okay, you pulled up the Chariot, which is the most, one of the most active cards of the Major Arcana is somebody who is moving forward in victory to create the outcome you want. Mm, good. So with just that bit of magic, mm -hmm. in the old sense of magic, magic is the art of creating change in conformity with your will. Mm -hmm. Well, again, if you go back to nothing but even just a psychological perspective, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I've been walking around today, you know, um, wound up over, you know, um, possibilities uh, with, with uh, you know, something that we're looking at, you know, at right. getting. And, and uh, you know, simply by saying, take a moment, you know, visualize the outcome that you want to see, and then put aside the outcome that you don't want to see. You mm -hmm. know, that, that starting from internally myself, even from a psychological perspective, it shifts my thinking. Yes. So what about these other cards here? What does that <coughs> mean? Okay, these were basically looking toward the past and the present. Mm -hmm. In the past, you had temperance, which is it, it's speaking in the general way of how you've created your life. You, you've taken disparate elements mm -hmm. culturally, psychologically, spiritually. You've put them together and you've created your own inner alchemy, your own art. Mm -hmm. Temperance, by the way, is also the card of the artist, and I know you're very involved in visual arts mm -hmm. and in cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, temperance has been mistaken as moderation. What the old meaning of temperance is basically taking different elements and creating something stronger. Tempered steel is carbon and iron mm -hmm. create, coming together to create something stronger. In the present spot, had the Two of Wands. The Order of the Golden Dawn named this card Dominion. Mm -hmm. It's basically moving your way through the world, bringing together all the elements, and looking toward what you want to create, what you want to conquer. One idea here is it's Alexander looking at the world mm -hmm. and how he's going to conquer it. It's also Alexander having already conquered the world and wondering what to do next. Mm -hmm. So that was your past and present. From there you had the Ten of Swords, which is getting all muddled mm -hmm. up. And to forfend that, we put some energy into a more positive outcome mm -hmm. and created a new future. Mm -hmm. One way of thinking of this is we took the timeline, and because the future is potential, you have many timelines. Mm -hmm. And there is a different version of you. Another, there's another version there's of you. There's a different me. version of you <laughs> on every timeline right. out there. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're jumping from one timeline to the next. Mm -hmm. If you keep going in this direction, what the cards show is where you are likely to wind up. But if you change course, you can jump onto a different timeline. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be very radical. It can almost seem like you've become a different person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know we are our thoughts, and we are what we create. and, and uh, um, it's all potential. That's the thing I, 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 I like about these sorts of discussions is that, is that uh, it just talks about what's possible, you know, and, and, and that, you know, you can create your own future. You can create mm -hmm. your own outcome. You know, you don't have to be worried like you're going to get a bad card and then, oh, no, now I've just got this big, you know, ten of swords on my forehead and I'm going to walk around right. with that. It's that, no, no, that just <coughs> means, look, reevaluate what it is that maybe you're thinking and then take a different exactly. outcome. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so you, you can head toward a different outcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, Light, Life Force Tarot is there to empower you. Um, cert when, whereas circumstances can sometimes make us feel powerless, mm -hmm. doing this kind of work with the tarot symbology and with the Life Force energy can actually empower you, me, to take the actions that are going to get us to where we really want to go. Mm -hmm. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is is uh, um, is consciousness and and mm. the fact that there's a lot of people out in the world today that are 
talking about we're we're in a very particular tipping point on this planet. Yes. You know, we cannot continue with the status quo. We can't keep going the way that we've been going. Changes have to be made. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to sit at home and just stew about it and say, wow, things aren't going the way I want. And, you know, same thing where attention goes, so does energy. Yes. You know, and, and that, uh, to me, is, is something that, that uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can understand that the only person you have to worry about is yourself, you know, first and foremost. And, mm -hmm. and I think what you do, you know, harkens back to that, that sense of unity that, yes. that like, the, the more you fight, you know, the more you are going to have something to fight, you know, and the more you can, you can understand mm -hmm. the idea that everything is related, you know, and the smallest action can create the largest outcome, you know. Yeah, it, it's so simple. Think of, think of terms of war and peace. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been asked even recently, but what can we do? You know, war happens, conflict happens, gang violence happens. What can we do about these things? Well, the first thing to do is, you know, on a, on a personal level is, you know, if you're in a hole, first step to getting out is stop digging. Mm -hmm. Don't participate in it. Mm -hmm. Second thing, I think one of the most brilliant thinkers was uh, a Zen teacher named Thich Nhat Hanh, who's mm -hmm. still alive today. He, uh, Martin Luther King nominated him for the Nobel Peace Prize in the 60s. Mm -hmm. He said, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Mm -hmm. Peace is every step. Mother Teresa once said that uh, um, during the 60s in the Vietnam War and the, the mm -hmm. protests, and they, uh, they invited her to come to an uh, anti-war rally. And she said, I will never go to an anti-war rally. But if you have a peace rally, invite me. I'll be the first one there. So are we at a tipping point? You know, like, are we in a rough area? Are we getting better? Are we getting worse? We're in you a know, rough where, area. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. I feel it's getting better. I know mm -hmm. not, every, not everybody I know would agree with me, mm -hmm. but in so many ways, things really are getting better. Not for everybody. They're the, they're, I think overall, statistically, wars are decreasing. Crime is generally decreasing. Violence is generally decreasing. Solutions to a lot of problems that used to be thought insoluble are being found. Mm -hmm. Do we have a long way to go? Hell yeah, we got a hell of a long way to go. This is, we're just beginning. But we're a lot farther along than we used to be. Technology is connecting people around the globe in ways that we could have never imagined before. Were the hunter-gatherer societies without any of this technology happier? Maybe, maybe. Sometimes I've suspected that. And at the same time, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. The people that I know are doing pretty good. And while I recognize there are some areas where life can be a living hell, I still feel hope. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we do um, one last card. Sure. Um, like like a, what's, a, what's coming up for the planet this year? What kind of year is this gonna be for, for, uh, for everybody at home watching this? Hmm. Okay. Well, you use your left hand, pick one. Mm -hmm. I'll use my left hand and pick one. All right, let's do that. And we'll put them right up here. And, okay, together, give me your hand. Okay. Right there. Okay. First of all, we've got the Five of Pentacles. This dour looking card basically indicates worry. It's the emotion of worry. And in a sense, it's coming up as a warning, but it's also saying that this coming year is gonna be a time when a lot of people are gonna be projecting fears into the future. But that's all it is, it's projections, projections Again, of fears. Where, where attention goes, energy flows, right? Right, mm -hmm. and you always have the choice. Mm -hmm. The other two cards we pulled up are Strength and the Hermit. Strength is using inner fortitude, inner resources, and courage to move into the future. The hermit is looking for the guidance, looking for the wisdom of the ages. And a lot of that is a lot simpler than people think. Look to s the perennial philosophy that says, there is only one of us here. There is only now. And once we realize that, once I realize that you are another myself, mm -hmm. 
that everyone here is another aspect of the divine spirit. We all put our pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> and it's going to affect how we treat each other. Right. See, the, the basis for ethics isn't I'm going to be punished if I'm not nice to people, mm -hmm. you know, the strange idea of hell or karma. The basis of ethics, of, of, of an inspired <laughs> ethics, is the realization that I am you, you are me, mm -hmm. there's only one of us here. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to hurt myself? That would be ridiculous. On the other hand, we are all one consciousness, ultimately. One consciousness looking through many eyes. With that, it'd be nice if we all had a good time. What can I do to bring that about? Mm -hmm. So does that hermit mean that, that uh, people are sort of going and, and uh, closing themselves off? or uh, not, not at all. The, herm the hermit is standing on the top of the mountain shining the light. The hermit is the one who has, it, it's, it's number nine in the, wait, it's number nine, strength is number eight, the hermit is number nine, those are the two major arcana we pulled up. Eight is close to completion, nine is completion. In a sense, I don't mean this in a s spooky doctrinaire mm -hmm. kind of way, but we are coming to the kind, kind of the end of an age. Well, we are, because if you just look at simply the amount of information that people have access to, the amount of um, lack of control that traditional dictatorships around the world have, you know, the, the, uh, the fact that, you know, you can have a million people on Facebook show up in, in a square in the Middle East and, and, and do a sit-in mm -hmm. overnight, you know, that really takes the teeth out of a lot of the sort of, um, you know, dictators around the world that, that would rather you stay at home and be scared. Right. You know, it, it, it shows people that they're not alone, you know, through the technology, through a lot of different things. Yeah, really. I think the, the, the Internet, especially with, with social media like Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. has created an environment where, in one sense, um, Crowley's dream is coming true. Every man and woman is a star. Mm -hmm. We can all shine in our own sphere. And at the same time, through interacting, we can affect each other. We can communicate a lot faster across the globe, which is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, misinformation gets thrown around a lot faster. But on the other hand, it can get corrected a lot faster, mm -hmm. too. And when, like you pointed out, when action needs to be mobilized, like the, uh, what happened in Egypt, it can happen very, very quickly. Somebody fires off something on Twitter. That's why some of the more repressive governments want to control that. Yeah. But uh, ultimately, the cat's out of the bag. It's not going to be controlled. There's mm -hmm. no getting it back in. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this is a time of great opportunity and-, and uh, Tremendous um, opportunity. And, and again, where you put your personal attention matters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dennis, thank you for spending the hour with us today and, thank you, and uh, um, being here. This has been a really awesome interview and, and uh, um, I want to bring you back again and, and uh, um, we'll maybe uh, have some other cool things to cool. show people. So um, to the audience at home, thank you for watching. Uh, this is your host Lance Wingia. This has been Waking Universe and we invite you to come back again soon. Thank you.